We know that two of them are critically endangered, two of them are vulnerable, and the other two, which is the dusky robin and yellow wattle bird, we think are okay, but we actually don't know they're okay. So if we can get a bit of a handle on those two as you're travelling around, that would be fantastic. Um, keep your eyes out, and I'd love you to just take down the GPS or something for our subspecies, including the scrub tit and the brown thornbill. Okay, oh yes. And and that's, and that's really. This island has still got its integrity at the moment, biologically, but only just. And we've really got to be careful that we don't lose it. How do we educate the people of the island about how important it is to keep that connectivity going? And how do we measure what's actually happening? Yeah, I was just sitting right on the Mount Stanley corner there. Yeah, like that's Yeah, right. They're here, and they when, fair, they, yeah. when they land, they do this weird thing with their wings. They go. Yeah, yeah right, eh? We're doing a bird survey at the other rock to observe the birds in an area around the estuary. It's just by sitting, listening carefully and, um, and calling to elicit that response, you can get a pretty good handle on, on who lives in this little, this little patch. Right that's now. the thornbill, buddy. Oh, that's the Tasmanian right. thornbill. Yeah, so that's that. That's the Tassie thornbill. A little bit of bush perched on the edge of a of a cattle paddock, and we've got five, six, you know, quality species here that are thriving, and they're not just visiting. They live here, they breed here, they raise children here. It's a very big, big old tree. Well, it's just about the feel of the place, really. It's an emotional thing, having a sense of place. I need to have a feeling of being amongst nature to a degree. You know, obviously I'm a farmer so I'm fighting nature to a point but by the same token I need to go to places that feel natural and go in amongst the trees and have other birds and not just magpies and crows. I need other species there. That's all part of making me feel, what's the word, at home on the farm really. Having a sense of pride in the place, not just having an open paddock. This is something that men don't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> if we start looking at common species which make up you know the greatest biomass in some of these systems they're much easier to find they're much easier to monitor and you're more likely to detect changes in them earlier because you have higher numbers of them so it may actually be more useful from a monitoring pers perspective to be looking at common and abundant species rather than rare and cryptic species the things that you need to think about when you're collecting data so that we can actually get the most out of it and be able to tell the stories that we need to tell. There were plenty of wood ducks on the way down. This morning we have a few workshops to get everyone prepped for the day. Everybody's been given different sites for the day, so there's about probably about 50 people who are going to be out and about. We've been working together with Kate, um, Kate Ravitch, who's over here. Hello. We've got a King Island dusky robin. There's one flying, and, and here's one not flying. They were stealing our cakes. That's one of the five endemic subspecies. Uh, amazing little bird. I guess I just really like birds and I like looking at them and um, watching them. I work down at Ballarat Clarendon College um, in Grassy doing outdoor education. We got the students involved in a survey and that was pretty fun. You see lots of birds and especially shorebirds and things like the hooded plover that are disappearing in Victoria. There's golden whistlers. Up you can hear the golden yeah. whistlers, they were just here. So we were lucky enough that my father and my uncles um, they left shelter belts in all the right places. Uh, we get a lot of benefit out of the shelter belts. Our cattle are warm in winter, and we're finding as climate change comes along with the hotter summers, they are heading to the shade. I started putting in um, eucalypts and banksias about, yeah, 15, 17 years ago, and then just have added to that over time. It's really nice to see the cattle laying on a real hot sunny afternoon, laying down in the shade, not standing around 
baking in the sun with their tongues hanging out. Having the water close by, it really creates the habitat for a lot of birds and different wildlife. You cannot have a healthy economy without a healthy society, and you cannot have a healthy society without a healthy environment. So in other words, the natural environment is our cradle. Yeah. So I was focused on just, you know, the frog in your hand or something like that, but now I see the bigger perspective, you know, the community side of it, bring, bringing, a, like Kate was talking about this morning, the social, economic environment. Mm. So if you're worried about, about conserving a particular animal, one of the most obvious things you can do is to give it more food. Well, not just bugs, but the bugs that we know that they like to eat, the bugs that are full of goodies, that are critical for fueling uh, not just the birds to survive, but to, to breed and to breed successfully to feed their babies. I need to love the country I'm in. I need to be able to have pride in it and feel good about it. And, and that's important to me. So, um, and I think most farmers feel like that. They want to, they want to do a good job. They want to um, feel like they've been good land managers. And, and this is part of land management. Because a nat natural vegetation is actually good for the soil, because having birds and things there, turning it over, uh, keeping bugs down, keeping pests away, moving things around is actually very healthy for land, then their own land will be more productive. They want to pass their farm on to their children and it's a productive, healthy farm, then they need to have some of this really productive, healthy bushland on it. The environment has to drive it because the environment is our cradle. You know, it's, that's where we, we, that's what nurtures us.